When I came across this piece of furniture, I knew I just had to have it. I fell in love instantly the second I saw it with all of its beautiful details and curves. I wasn't ready to flip this piece of furniture at the time, so I just put it in storage and then forgot all about it. But I've now found it and the time has come to flip it and turn it into something spectacular. So let's dive in. But just in case you don't like painted furniture, I'm just letting you know that this piece is going to be completely painted because even though it's in a great condition, I wanted to create a piece that would be perfect for a little girl. Since this piece has been in my storage for quite some time, it is really dusty. So I started off by giving it a little bit of a sweep to get rid of all the dust. Once I'd removed the bulk of the dust, I needed to give the piece a deep clean. So I mixed up a degreaser and I started cleaning the piece. There's two different ways that you can do this. You can clean the piece prior to doing your scuff sand and then again after doing your scuff sand. Or if you find that there's not going to be a lot of grease that you're going to be able to push into the timber when you do your scuff sand, you could just skip this cleaning before process and just do your deep clean after you've done your scuff sanding. Once I finished cleaning the piece, I took it apart. I took the drawers out and then I took the mirror off. It's going to be easier to paint them all separately. I now need to remove the old handles from the drawers because I'm not going to be using these handles when I put the piece back together again. But when I went to remove them, I discovered that they weren't actually screwed on and that they were just sitting here. So I grabbed the hammer out, gave them a few taps to loosen them and then just pulled them out. Now that I've removed the handles, I just gave the inside of the drawers a deep clean as well with my degreaser. Once I was finished with my initial clean, I grabbed out all my safety gear because it's super important that you do use safety gear whenever you're using any power tools. I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and I'm just going over the entire piece to lift off the old varnish and scuff sand the surface to get it ready to be painted. I am going to be using an adhesive primer, but giving a piece a scuff sand is just going to help make it extra durable. Because I've decided that I'm not going to be leaving any raw components of timber on this piece and I'm going to be painting the whole thing, I do need to give everywhere a scuff sand. And because this piece has quite a lot of intricate details, I do need to just get a piece of sandpaper out and then go through and sand by hand all of the areas that I couldn't get to with my orbital sander. Now that I've finished all the scuff sanding, I'm going to do another deep clean of the piece. This clean is going to leave the piece nice and clean of any residue so that I can start applying the primer. You just need to make sure that you get all of that sanding dust off as well because you don't want any of that dust to be in your paint. When you're filling really large holes, often it is better to use a piece of timber to fill the hole as much as you possibly can first, and then to use the wood filler over the top of that. If you're using wood filler just to fill a really large space, it is often not that strong, and when you go to drill through it again, it can crack. So ideally, you wanna try and use a piece of timber first and then use the wood filler. You can also use Bondo if you don't have any sort of small pieces of timber available, but these handles that I took off did actually have a chunk of timber at the back of them. So I've just sawed that off and now I'm going to glue that into these little holes. I let the glue dry, applied the wood filler over the top of that, let that dry, and now I'm sanding off the excess wood filler. Now it's finally time to paint. I grabbed out my primer. Today I'm using the Mint Grip by Mint by Michelle. It's linked down in the description, but it's a new primer that she's just recently released and it is amazing. Because this piece was so small, I decided that I was going to paint it all by hand. So I just started applying the primer onto the piece with a paintbrush and a mini roller. I 
often get asked the question, why don't I spray all of my pieces? And really it just comes down to a personal preference. But when the piece is really small like this, getting out the spray gun and using the spray gun does use a lot of extra paint. And it also does take a lot of extra time to get the spray finish correct. So I usually find that it is when I'm dealing with a smaller piece, just easier to continue painting with my paintbrush and roller than it is to use a spray gun. Once the main part had been painted, I then applied some masking tape onto the mirror, painted the mirror and also the front of the drawers. Once the primer was done, it was time to paint the actual color of the piece and I've selected a beautiful pink color called Ballet Flats. I once again used my paintbrush and my roller to paint this first coat onto the entire piece, wet that dry and then painted a second coat of this same color onto the entire piece as well. Now that the base color is all done, I'm going to be creating a fun and unique gingham pattern. What I'm doing here is using the masking tape to create the pattern. And I start by measuring out using a masking tape piece as a spacer to get all of these lines going across the piece. I'm then going to, once I reach the top, turn it around and get the same lines using the same spacer going the opposite direction as well. Now there's quite a lot of different patterns that you can create with the masking tape and a few different ways to do this. But what I've decided to do is just have the initial squares as white, which I'm going to paint white and then leave the opposite side of that as the original pink. You can also create almost like a checkerboard pattern if you do cut out extra sections with the masking tape and have extra sections available where you're going to paint those the same color white. But I decided that I'm just going to paint this initial section as white and not have the checkerboard pattern. So I applied the masking tape to create this pattern on both sides of the piece and then I'm also going to do this on the draw fronts as well. I measured out the sections using a line across the middle initially because I wanted to try and have as many even sections as I could on these draw fronts because it was such a small space. Because I had two drawers, I wanted the pattern to be in the exact same spot. So I used the first drawer as a measure so that I could get the tape in the same spot as I do on the first drawer on the second drawer. Now that I've got all of the masking tape on, I need to use the base color and go across and paint all of the masking tape lines with the base color to seal the tape and make sure that I'm not going to get any bleed through. This is a really great tip if you're not used to using masking tape or if you're wanting to get a really straight line with your masking tape across two different paint colors, you wanna seal the line with either a clear sealer or the original paint color and this is going to give you those really nice, clear, crisp lines without the bleed through. While the initial coat of the base color was drying, I then decided I was going to get a transfer out and apply a couple of little beautiful transfer details to the arms of where the mirror goes. I picked this beautiful little flower and I'm going to just press the transfer on and then peel off the backing paper, repeating the same process on both sides. Whenever you apply a transfer or a decoupage paper, in most instances, you do need to apply a top coat over the top of that to seal it. So I'm just grabbing out a top coat, which I applied over the transfer and then also over the top of this piece for a little bit of extra protection. 
Now for the fun part of painting the extra color in the gingham squares, basically I decided that I was going to use a white, which is probably the hardest color to use to paint over the top of another color. And I then needed to paint four different coats of this white over the top, just to make sure that I had a really nice solid white. Once I finished all the painting, I put the piece back together again. And then I got to remove all of the masking tape to show my beautiful design. I love peeling the masking tape off and doing the reveal. I selected some new hardware, drilled some new hardware holes, and then applied the new hardware onto the two different drawers. And here it is, the end result. I absolutely love how it turned out, but I understand that it's not for everyone. If you love this makeover, here's two more videos that I recommend that you go and watch.